biology. So let's go to the next disease. So the next disease we have already talked about it. This is jaundice. So let's look at jaundice. So what is jaundice? Jaundice simply this is a condition whereby there is failure of the liver to eliminate excess bile pigments from the breakdown of red blood cell. So the liver was unable to remove bile pigments uh, from the blood, from the breakdown of red blood cells. So the liver was unable to remove the excess bile from the blood. So since excess bile is still in the blood, so the skin pigmentation is going to change color from the normal color that we know, which is the normal color for the Africans, the normal color for the Americans or the Europeans, to a yellow color. So the skin is going to assume a yellow color. So, as this happens, we see that bile will now circulate freely around the body. So bile is going to circulate freely around the body. So as bile circulates freely around the body, so the body skin pigmentation is going to change color from the normal and assume a yellow color. So as this happens, we see that the bilirubin formed from the breakdown of hemoglobin is always eliminated as bile, which is then used for digestion process, whereby Previously, we said that the function of bile juice is emulsification to break down large fat droplets to oil droplets and also neutralizing of the acidic chyme. So again, this diagram, as you can see, we have the normal face, how it looks like, and then the jaundiced face, how it looks like. So these people having jaundice, they have a yellow skin pigmentation. So the patients here develop some yellow body, even the clothes become yellow, the eyes become yellow. However, we see that this is because in the blood, there is a lot of bilirubin or bile in circulation. So this bilirubin or, or bile in circulation is what causes the yellow skin pigmentation. Yeah, the yellow skin pigmentation. So apart from that, apart from excess bile in the blood, we see that jaundice can also be caused by factors such, such as blockage of yeah, the blockage of the bile duct. So if the bile duct is also blocked, so this will also lead to that condition which is called jaundice because bile will not be able now to leave the liver in order to, to go for digestion or excretion. So since there will be the buildup of bile in the liver, as blood will be passing, blood will be taking that, that bile and bilirubin and circulating in the body because there is excess bile in the liver. So it will mean that liver cannot be able to leave through the normal channel of the bile duct. So as blood is passing, it will be carrying as well uh, some traces of the bile. So blockage of the bile duct can also lead to this condition of jaundice. As well, the destruction of the liver cells by a disease. If the liver cells have been destroyed, uh, not only the liver cells, if the liver or the body cells have been destroyed outside of the liver, it can also lead to this condition, uh, which is called jaundice. So apart from that, we also see that for example, for the fetus, as you can see, so this condition is studied in transport in plants and animals, whereby this condition was referred to as erythroblastosis fetalis. Erythroblastosis fetalis was also referred to as hemolytic disease of the newborn. How does this disease come about, hemolytic disease of the newborn? So this hemolytic disease of the newborn mainly occurs through mass destruction of the red blood cells in the fetus. So this mass destruction of the red blood cells in the fetus. Remember, if the red blood cells have been, have been disintegrated or broken down, they are going to release hemoglobin, whereby you say that we have hem and globulin. This process will take place inside the liver. But now, in this hemolytic disease of the newborn, it happens that the red blood cells are being broken outside of the liver. So since they are being broken down outside of the liver, it happens that the excess proteins in the blood will now be deposited in the skins and the tissue of the fetus. So as the cells and the tissues are deposited, as the, the proteins are deposited on the skins and the tissues of the fetus, the fetus will now assume a yellow color. So the skin pigmentation will change color from normal skin to a yellow skinned baby. So if the doctors look at the kid and then they see that the baby is yellow skinned, automatically it points towards a liver, liver failure, a liver problem. It will mean that red blood cells of the fetus have been destroyed. So there is something which is destroying the red blood cells of the fetus, which is an abnormal, uh, an abnormal trait. 
So by this, the doctors will put the, key, uh, the baby into therapy and then the blood of the baby will be replaced. So the donor blood uh, will be put in, then the defective blood will be removed out of the, of the baby through blood transfusion. So what are the symptoms of jaundice? So the first symptom of jaundice is fever. Apart from fever, the other symptom is body chills, uh, whereby you feel cold but you are sweating. So there will be body chills. Apart from that, there is abdominal pain as well as flu-like symptoms. So also remember, um, for this condition, we have, it's called jaundice. So the skin of this person will be yellow in color. So this yellow coloration of the skin, apart from, apart from the normal dark colored urine. So apart from dark colored urine, so there will also be itchy skin. So the skin of these people will also be, they feel itchy. They need to scratch themselves. But now this is not scratching yourself on one part of the body, but the whole body, you are feeling itchy in the whole body. So what are the treatments and control of this disorder? So treatment and control, early diagnosis to detect the problem is always the first one. Apart from that, avoid alcohol because alcohol predisposes one to getting this disorder which is referred to as the jaundice. Apart from that, use correct medication to control jaundice symptoms. Example, itching. So use correct medications to control itching, to control fever like the pain relieving drugs, etc. So apart from that, frequent baby feeding in order to, to control boil movement and increase bilirubin elimination. So frequent baby feeding. So feed the baby frequently. So, so in order to train the, the boils and the gut in, uh, in ways by which fluid can be able to pass, peristalsis, removal of waste products. So frequent baby feeding is mainly so much important uh, to prevent jaundice and blockage of the bile duct. So apart from that, drink a lot of fluid. So people are asked to drink a lot of fluid is so much advisable in order to clean the system, not only the liver, but the whole body to clean the blood. So drink a lot of fluid. So apart from that, we also have eating a balanced diet is also very much important in jaundice. So apart from that, let's look at the next disease of the liver, which is now liver cancer. So liver cancer, as you can see, the liver, this is an affected liver. So there is an abnormal growth on the liver. There is an abnormal growth in the liver, as you can see. So this is liver cancer. So this liver cancer, uh, it is mainly brought by, okay, cancer. No one knows the major cause of cancer. But it is led by an abnormal multiplication of the liver cells leading to lump, uh, which is mainly called carcinoma, which is mainly called hepatocellular carcinoma, exactly. So that lump which is growing on the liver due to cancer is mainly called hepatocellular carcinoma. That's the name given to that lump. So if you mention out here to any medical personnel hepatocellular carcinoma, it will mean that you mean that cancer of the liver. So this hepatinoma carcinoma, hepatocellular carcinoma, is basically the abnormal growth of cells in the liver. So that abnormal growth of cells in the liver is what brings about this condition, which is now the cancer of the liver. So this malfunctioning leads, this multiplication of the cells leads to the malfunctioning of the liver, whereby the liver will not produce enough bile, the liver will not undertake any function of the liver because the liver is sick. The liver is not functioning. The liver is sick. It is not functioning appropriately. So what are the causes of hepatocellular carcinoma or liver cancer? So the major cause of this is exposure to certain chemicals in the environment. For example, we have cigarette smoking and bang smoking. So these people who engage in cigarette or bang smoking, they are at a very high risk of catching this disorder, this disease. So because if they smoke these things, they are intaking a lot of chemicals. So exposure to certain chemicals in the environment predisposes one to liver cancer. Apart from that, it is genetic. So if there is someone in the family lineage that had a cancer, 
So the people in that lineage have a great risk of obtaining the same cancer or different cancer. So it is also genetic. Apart from that, exposure to certain radiations, especially X-ray or gamma rays. The microwave, the one that we use at home, the microwave also releases radiation from the decomposition of the tungsten found in the magnetron of the microwave that produces the heat. How does the microwave produce the heat? So the microwave produces the heat whereby microwave heats from inside to outside. So remember, if one is trying to roast, to roast a meat, for example, so the meat of the roasting of meat uh, pushes heat from outside and entering inside the meat. That is how it happens. So the heat from roasting comes from outside going inside. But how does the microwave heat? The microwave heats from inside going outside. And that's why after using the microwave, you'll notice that the food outside might be cold. But if you dig in and try to eat the contents from inside, you'll find that it is very hot. So that's how the microwave heats, from inside going outside. The normal fire from roasting heats from outside going inside. So, when the microwave is functioning, it's not advisable to stay near the microwave. If you have put the microwave on, it's advisable to stand a distance from the microwave. Why? Because not all microwaves. Some microwaves, these days microwaves have been made to be, to be, to be safer, whereby the old microwaves, most of them were not safe. Whereby these microwaves were producing these gamma rays that you are talking about. So if the microwave is functioning and you stay near the microwave, remember we have said that the microwave heats from inside to outside. So the microwave is heating your food and you have stayed there. You are not feeling the heat, but the microwave might be burning the cells and the tissues inside the body. So that is how this thing functions. But these days, the microwaves have been made to be safer. So they have that protective iron shield, protective uh, aluminum shield, protective steel shield that prevents that harmful radiation from affecting the body. But also you should still take note. When using the microwave, try as much as possible to stay far from the microwave. Not very far, but at least some distance from the microwave. Because this harmful rays being released by the microwave might enter into your body enter into the nucleus and make the nucleus to make the cell cells to be produced abnormally. So remember, cancer begins from one cell. One cell affects the next cell, affects the next cell. So many cells now begin to grow abnormally, leading now to the cancer. So to avoid this, always try as much as possible to avoid radiation. Avoid the gamma rays, avoid the radiation rays, especially X-ray and the gamma rays in the environment. So those are the causes of, the main causes that may cause this disorder, which is referred to as the liver cancer, hepatocellular carcinoma. So what are now the symptoms of liver cancer? So the symptoms of liver cancer, we have weight loss and fatigue. We have loss of appetite. There is upper abdominal pains. After that, there is nausea and vomiting. After nausea and vomiting, there is also, mm, did we say fatigue and weakness? Uh, okay, there is weakness and fatigue, there is swelling of the abdomen. Because if the liver has been affected, so the liver is going to swell. Because, uh, picture this, the liver cells are growing abnormally. So if they are growing abnormally, yes, they'll be also be seen on the external part of the body. So if they'll be seen on the external part of the body, this will also mean that there's, there'll be some swelling on that part of the liver. So this, there'll be swelling on the abdomen, so there'll be abdominal swelling. So after that, Jaundice-like symptoms. All liver disorders, most of them, they lead to jaundice-like symptoms as well as lightly colored stool. Uh, did we mention fever? Fever is also there, so also there is fever. So fever, unexpected weight loss, etc., etc. So what are the treatment of liver cancer? So the treatment of liver cancer, remember, early diagnosis to detect the problem because if cancer is detected at an early age it can be able to be eliminated and it shall never return back so apart from that we have chemotherapy whereby in chemotherapy the patient is given medication so in chemotherapy the patient is given medication like tablets you have been told 
every day make sure you have swallowed the, you have taken these tablets two times three three times four so in chemotherapy this is whereby the patient is given tablets to control the cancer that is chemotherapy so you are given tablets to control the cancer that is chemotherapy chemo from the word chemicals you are given the tablets the medication to control the cancer so the other treatment and control is now radiotherapy so for the radiotherapy they use now the the radiations you go to the hospital then the patient is put inside this machine and then that machine targets exactly so if it's liver cancer that machine is going to target the liver and then it's going to shoot lasers in that tumor then destroy that tumor uh, when still inside the body destroy that tumor from inside if it's brain cancer so what's going to happen is that um, brain tumor <laughs> if it's brain tumor so that machine is going to be pos positioned exactly whereby that tumor is and then it's going to shoot that laser exactly to that tumor inside the brain and then destroy those cells so that is radiotherapy this machine uses radiation to destroy cancer cells in chemotherapy you are given tablets and medication to control and destroy the cancerous cells so that's the difference between radiotherapy and chemotherapy so apart from that in severe conditions or in severe cases surgery might be preferred so also treatment and control we have surgery to remove the tumor so these people can also undertake surgery in order to remove the tumor so apart from that uh, another treatment and control avoid smoking at all costs so avoid smoking after avoiding to smoke the other treatment and control avoid radioactive materials that remove harmful waves so really much avoid radioactive materials like the ones which have uranium radium radon so mostly avoid radioactive materials in order to control the cancer or in order to control this uh, the liver cancer etc etc so those are the treatments and control for the liver cancer biology